Welcome. This video discusses the if else if else control structure, some information on while and do loops, De Morgan's theorem, and the C and C++ version of the switch case statements. I went to visit my college roommate in Wisconsin, and we took a trip to the Harley Davidson Museum. That's me sitting on a Harley in the museum. I wasn't worried about skinning my knees because the bike was bolted to the floor. I couldn't help taking a picture of this road sign. The county roads were identified by one or two characters. Check it out. Here's the intersection of roads PP and TA. Actually, what is this video about? I want to show how to organize a program with if and else if statements for a traffic light. This simple program inputs a single character, R, Y, or G, for red, yellow, and green. The program then displays a message, stop, caution, or go. I also want the program to reject illegal inputs and treat uppercase and lowercase letters the same. Here is the C++ version of the code. The Cout and Cn statements need to be replaced with printf or scanf to make the program work in the C language. At the top, light is defined as a character variable. The do loop encloses all of the code that inputs a character and displays the output. That way, the program can keep running for multiple inputs. The Q character is used to quit the program. A prompt is displayed on the screen, enter R, Y, or G, and a character is input from the keyboard and stored in the light variable. This version of the program uses only the if statements. A separate if statement is used to check for either an uppercase or lowercase character input. The double equal operator, equal equal, is used to compare the character in the variable named light to a single character literal. The single quotes in C and C++ are used to identify a single character literal. The double quotes are used in C and C++ to identify a character string. The last if statement checks to make sure that only legal inputs are made. If anything except big R, little r, big Y, little y, big G, or little g is input, an error message is displayed. The use of the logical and ampersand ampersand may look a little strange here, but more on this later in the video. The program can be simplified by converting the input variable to an uppercase character. The if statements now only need to test for uppercase characters big R, big Y, and big G. Here is a flowchart showing the execution of the program. When the logical expression for each if statement evaluates to true, the Cout statement executes and control flows down to the next statement. If the expression evaluates to false, the Cout is skipped and control still flows down to the next statement. Let's look again at the last if statement and see what would happen if it were changed to use the logical or, two vertical bars, instead of the logical and, ampersand, ampersand. With the logical OR, if any of the conditions are true, the resulting expression becomes true. So, if somebody input a capital X, then the IF statement would always be true because the first test, light not equal to R, is true. But if somebody did input a capital R, the first test is false, but the second test, light not equal capital Y, is true. Since the entire expression is a collection of logical OR tests, any of the comparisons being true will cause the entire expression to be true. The message illegal selection try again is displayed, even regardless of what character is input. It might be easier to think of this negative logic using car doors as an example. If either the doors is open, the dome light is, turns on. This is true even if only one of the doors is open. The logical OR evaluates to true if either condition is true. Instead of just saying what happens to turn the light on, I'm going to use De Morgan's theorem to get the same result by complementing, changing to the opposite state, each of the input and output conditions and changing the OR to an AND. The dome light is on if not both the driver's door is not open and the passenger door is not open.
the result is exactly the same. Here it is in code that uses the bool data type. The bool data type only has two values, true and false. The function named dome light on has two input parameters, both of type bool. The function returns a true to indicate the light is on and a false to indicate that the light is off. The first return statement is probably easier to understand. It returns true if either the driver doors open is true or the passenger door open is true. The extra spaces around the parentheses are only there to help make the code a little easier to read. They are not required to make the program work. The second return statement has been totally demorganized. The exclamation point operator indicates a logical not in C and C++. The inner parentheses state open parentheses, not driver door open and not passenger door open, close parentheses. The driver's door is not open and the passenger door is not open. This condition would show the light being in the off state, so we complement that entire expression with an exclamation point for the inner parentheses and change it into defining when the light is on instead of off. Here is a slightly different version that returns true if the light is off. Changing the name of the function to dome light off does not do anything, but it helps identify what will be happening inside. The dome light is off if both the driver door is closed and the passenger door is closed. The second return statement has been demorganized and returns the same result. You might look that one over to see what was going on, but I'm not going to describe it here. De Morgan's theorem is named after Augustus de Morgan, a 19th century British mathematician who was instrumental in developing some of the math behind Boolean algebra, which in turn is named after George Boole, another 19th century mathematician. Algebra is derived from the Arabic word al-Jabbar and comes from the writing of a Persian mathematician, Muhammad ibn Musa al-Khwazimi. De Morgan's theorem is used extensively in computer hardware to reduce the amount of circuits needed to implement the logic. Computer circuits jump back and forth between positive and negative logic all the time when implementing AND and OR functions. In the first circuit shown, the AND gate performs an OR function if the inputs are inverted. Although it would not be very efficient, an entire computer could be built using only NAND gates. Back to our program for the traffic signal. This section of code uses a single IF statement to reject illegal inputs. If the character input is not R, and the input is not Y, and the input is not G, then the user types something illegal. If the logical OR operator two vertical bars were used instead of the AND, two ampersands, the expression inside the IF statement would always be true and an error message would always appear. Think that one over. If the user typed a Y, then light not equal to R would be true. With OR operators, if any of the selections are true, then the entire expression evaluates to a true. The logical expression inside the IF could use the OR operator, but the entire expression would need to be demorganized. Here is a flowchart showing the if else, if else control structure. A circle representing an entry and exit to the routine, a parallelogram represents input or output, and a diamond represents a decision. It might be easier and would make better coding to provide a default condition, so that we test for all the valid inputs using if and else if statements. At the end of the block of if and if else statements, we place a final else statement without any test expression. An else cannot have a logical expression to collect anything that is left over. This is referred to as the default condition. This is much better programming. We don't need to worry about modifying 
the final if in a previous example in the event that something new was added, such as processing an F character for flashing red. The only problem with this code is that entering a Q to quit the program also causes the illegal selection message to appear. An extra if statement should be added to process the Q. I did something else here that is very common in, in embedded systems where code becomes part of the product, such as a microwave oven. I created an infinite loop using while, open parentheses, true, close parentheses. Other than embedded systems, it's usually not considered a good idea to use infinite loops. This loop will never end unless something causes it to break out of the loop. The break statement is executed when the letter Q is entered at the keyboard. The break causes the program to exit the loop, but not exit the program. The switch case statements provide another way of implementing if, else, if, else logic. Although some languages have implemented a more robust version of the case statement, C and C++ can only test for an integral value such as bool, character, and int. The C and C++ languages cannot test for float or double or test for a range of values. In this example, the switch statement selects the value to be tested. The, the case statements identify the values to be compared against the value tested. It is important to place a break semicolon statement at the end of each case. If the break semicolon is missing, flow just continues to the next statement. Some people consider it good programming practice to place a break statement at the end of the default code, although it is not required since the program flow will fall out of the switch block anyway. Since the program would keep flowing down, you can use multiple case statements for each condition as shown in this example. Instead of converting the light variable to uppercase, just use a case capital R followed by a case small r. If either the capital R or the small r is matched with the light variable, flow keeps going down, without putting the word stop, and finally exiting the switch statement when the break is reached. If you forget the break after the C out to display stop, flow would keep going down and display caution after displaying stop. When using a flow chart to diagram the case statement, the selections are usually graphed horizontally instead of vertically. As a review, the following topics were discussed in this video. If, else, if, else, while loops, do loops, De Morgan's theorem, switch case, I'm hoping that I helped make things more clear rather than just causing more confusion. Back to pretending that I'm on a Harley. Not